But what we want to focus on is how do we get the dog to jump up into the car. And we want to motivate the dog to do that. Yeah, we can lift them in and we can use e-collars and we can use all that stuff. And we can cover that in another video because I have used an e-collar to get a dog to go into a car. It's not that aversive. But today we're going to talk about how to do it in a motivational, fun, and, and uh, inspiring way to do animator. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take some cheese and I'm going to take it and I'm going to lay it right here on the car. Um, floor panel. And then I'm going to take the cheese and I'm going to lay it up here on the seat. And I'm going to let Dwayne just do that. I'm not even going to tell him to jump up or get in because he doesn't know the command yet. And I'm going to show him the cheese and I'm going to put it back a little tiny bit further and take another piece and put it right where he got the first one. Okay, now he's got two of them, right? His feet are up. He's starting to think, hey, this is a pretty good thing. I take the cheese, I put it in a little bit further and he's still able to get it. Okay? Now, I'm going to use two more pieces. Some people say, why do you put the cheese in your mouth? And I say, because I don't have a pocket knife to cut it, and my teeth are razor sharp. They just cut the cheese like a, like a cheese cutter. So here, I put the cheese up there, and while he's up there, I put the piece back a little further, and I put it back a little further, and there he goes. He's in. So now I want to put that on a cue, right? Come here, Dwayne. Dwayne, hop up. And there he goes, right? He's doing the behavior. He knows the behavior. It's positive. He's learned that, and he can get it. Good boy. Out. Good boy. Put it back on cue. Dwayne, hop up. Now, I'm not going to help him, because he knows how to get in. Hop up. Oh, there he goes. And yeah, I repeated it twice because Dwayne is still in the, in the luring and learning phase, right? So we don't have a problem with it. It's not a strict obedience command. Dwayne, hop up. And he's still using this two-legged approach on, two-legged approach off. He's trying to, he wants to climb in. I really want to teach him to jump in. Dwayne, hop up. Come on. Good boy. It's got to keep being a spring. Hop up. Hop up. See, I know he can do it, so I'm just going to sit out and wait it out. Good boy. Go ahead, hop up. There he goes. Be patient with your dog, because people tell me all the time, oh, my dog doesn't do this. I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried. You didn't try long enough. Patience and perseverance is the key to dog training and the way I've solved countless behavior problems is just being persistent and patient with the dog. Give the dog a chance to learn it. Another big issue people always tell me is they'll say, well, he does it with the treats, but he won't do it without the treats. Then you need to keep using the treats a little bit longer. I believe in the beginning, during this luring and shaping phase of the dog's training, everything should be done with a reward. He should see reward, 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 so much that he forgets that the reward is actually a component of it and becomes blind to it, right? So he just knows he's going to go in and the treat's going to be there. He knows the treat is going to be there. Once he has himself that convinced the treat is there, that's when I can start fading the treats. Do not, whatever you do, fade the treats or the rewards, whatever those rewards are, too early on. Because if you do, the dog will become suspicious. Is there a treat? Isn't there a treat? And that's when you start to run into problems. Because if he thinks, well, there's no treat, I don't want to do it, then you have to start reshaping the, the, the luring and everything like that. And then the dog will start to try to figure out, is there a treat, isn't there a treat? And they'll try to decide when they're going to do the behavior. He must do it 100% of the time. And he should have several hundred experiences of this being positive, positive. There's a reward, there's a reward, there's a reward. Jump out, out. Good boy. Ready? Dwayne, up. And when he looks at me for the treat, I just go, Dwayne, up. He's not going to get this treat. See, that's the interesting part. He thinks by looking at this treat, he's going to get this, but he's not. Dwayne, up. The treats are on the seat, which is why you're going to want a seat cover for your seats when you use your car. You don't want to have sticky mozzarella cheese, string cheese, that is, all over your seat when you go sit on it with your nice pants. Oh, good boy. And don't make a big deal if the dog is a little clunky and you feel like he hurt himself. Don't baby your dog. Let your dog be a dog. Be tough with the dog. The dog's going to be tough. Good boy. Come on, hop up. That a boy. That's a good boy. 
Dogs like strong things. They don't like to be babied and treated like little babies. Go hop up. Go get it. Hop up. Hop up. Hop up. Hop up. He's got to be able to see the treat. He sees it in there. I know he wants it. Hop up. And I just repeat the exercise. I repeat the command. I repeat what I want. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. And always end it on a positive note. If he's done it right, reach in here, grab him some more treats, and throw a little party in here for your dog so that the dog sees that this is a good thing. He's in a place where he should be. He's in a place that brings him abundant rewards. And make sure here in this kind of situation, if the dog was suspicious about the car, that the car is giving the dog the rewards, not me. I don't want to hand the dog the treat here because that's going to make him really dependent on my hand. Instead, what I want here is I want the dog to see the treats are coming from the car. So being in the car is a lot more positive experience than being outside of the car and looking for the treats from me. So travel safe with your dog. Make sure your dog is safe. Make sure your dog has training and life skills to survive so he has a happy, healthy life, so he's with you for the rest of his life, so you don't end up falling short and giving your dog bad tools where he can't survive with. Everything you do should be based on giving your dog the structure, the training, and the knowledge to have a happy, healthy life and to stay alive in a human world. Remember, this is a human world. We're putting dogs into our human world and they need our education and our knowledge and our structure to stay alive and to survive. That's your tip for the day. Right, Dwayne Mater? Let's go for a ride. Good boy, wait.